Welcome back. How you guys doing? A little tough 16 finale for you guys. I'm going to start from the bottom of the main card and uh, work my way on up. Main event, all that good stuff. You know, in terms of tough, you know, I'm not really all that impressed with the show. It's 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 more drama than it is fighting, but they had a couple fighters that I thought were pretty cool, you know, on this on the show. Like the two Canadians fighting, Mike Ricci and Mike something, whatever, something or another. The guy never had a shirt on. You guys know the guy I'm talking about. If you guys are what wa- you guys watch the show, but yeah, to kick the card off, man, by all means, let's uh, let's kick it off and get it get it going here. But um, Jonathan Brookins taking on uh, Dustin Poirier. It's a pretty good matchup too, because I think John- Jonathan Brookins has done really good thus far. He's done pretty good in the UFC so far, Jonathan Brookins. He's a great submission guy, good, you know, a good striker. I'd say good striker, you know what I mean? Not not amazing striker. He's not the striker that Dustin Poirier is. It should make for a pretty interesting night. Dustin Poirier, I believe, coming off a loss. To whom, I don't I don't remember. I think it should, it should make for a cool fight. If, I think if Dustin Poirier uh, keeps this on, the, on you know, in stand-up, sticking and moving and doing his thing and, and, and doing what he does well, it should be he'll pull out a pretty good decision, you know? A little lackadaisical, he could uh, see a submission loss possibly. Uh, I don't see a, I don't see a Brookins knocking out a Dustin Poirier. I don't see that at all. It all depends where Brookins has been, you know. What's he doing these days? You know what I mean. So uh, moving along though, uh, Melvin Glar taking on uh, Jamie Varner, which I think is a, is a pretty damn a highlight match. In, in my opinion, a highlight match for this card, man. I, I think it's pretty sick, man. Pretty pretty cool fight. Melvin Glar, top notch, badass striker, man. I mean, both these guys, really, man. Jamie Varner as well, badass striker. Knocked out, um, um, looked, looked awesome. Um, Barboza, Edson Barboza. Knocked Edson Barboza the fuck out. Everybody thought, oh, Barboza, man, he's going to teach, you know, Jamie Varner a, 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 you know, a lesson coming back here, you know. His, you know, Jamie Varner's return is ill-willed, you know. He's going to get knocked the fuck out by Barboza, you know. And Barboza, you know, had, had a right to those claims, you know what I mean? And, you know, because he'd come in there and, Fuck dudes up, you know what I mean? So, and Varner, you know, lined everything up. Everything lined up perfectly, man. Sick knockout for Varner. Took Barboza out, made him human. You know what I mean? Everybody was like, Dude, this guy's like, this guy's a badass. You know what I mean? Who's gonna be able to compete with this guy? You know? And then Varner comes in, knocks him the fuck out. You know what I mean? And then you know, suffers a loss since then. Like I said, man, I cannot for the life of me remember who the hell he lost to. You guys can go ahead and comment. For some reason, Joe Lozon is ringing a bell, but I'm not sure if that's exactly who it was. But uh, it could, it could be Melvin Gillard. I, I believe, like I said, I believe Melvin Gillard's coming off a loss too. And I think it's been a little while since he's been in uh, in the cage, man. I think it's been a little while. I want to say a six, seven month mark. It could be longer than that. But uh, I like Melvin Gillard, man. Melvin Gillard will throw down 40 plus fights in his career. You know what I mean? He's uber experienced, man. Uh, tons of experience. Varner, 20 and seven. It's pretty damn sweet, man. I mean, they both have absolute badass records, you know what I mean? The records they deserve, you know what I mean, for their performances and shit. But it's a tough fight to call, man. Really, really tough. And, you know, I, hats off to Joe Silver for putting this together because, to me, it's like, man, this is this. It's a sick-ass fight. Two guys that are coming off losses need to get a win and need to get back into uh, winning ways. The other guy could see a problem, you know, when it comes to the big show, you know what I mean? Could be, man, could be. I'm not sure what, you know, how the relationship is between uh, Gillard and Dana or, you know, Jamie Barner and Dana, you know what I mean? I mean, this could be the uh, ending ending fight, you know what I mean? It could be the fight if either one of these guys loses, depending on his uh, his uh, relationship with the big guy, you know, the big boss man, you know, it could be cutsies. You never know, man. Dana's cut people for one loss. We've seen it go, and we've we've seen it go anyway. You know what I mean? We've we've seen it go uh, go that way. So moving on to the heavyweights, it's my weight class right here, man. Big guys coming in, fucking banging, banging shit up. Pat Berry taking on uh, Shane Del Rosario, man. I, I'm liking that match. Uh, we're talking about two ex kickboxers looking to throw down, kick some ass. Pat Berry, seven and five. He's ever learning. You know what I mean? The guy's still got a lot to learn. He's still young in the biz. You know what I mean? He's still young in MMA. So Shane De Rosario um, suffered a recent loss. Stipe Miocic, um, sick ass fight. He was in it to win it, man. I mean, he was in there and, and looked really good. It's just Stipe was just 
relentless on the ground. Cut him. Did a lot of shit to cut him bad across the face. A lot of it was a bloody fight, man. Bloody fight. But I think Shane Rosario. I I, I kind of gave him a little bit of the upper hand in this fight. I hope Pat Barry's been working on a lot of shit because you know experience for experience. It's kind of hard to say, man. I think I think they're, they're uh, could be pretty close in experience. You know what I mean in terms of. Uh, pre-MMA careers and shit like that. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm weighing in the area of a Shane Del Rosario a little bit. I think Pat Perry's... Pat Perry's just had a really hard time with uh, just being able to really get in there, you know, wrestle properly and sub guys, you know, and shit like that. Because his recent claim... Actually, not recent. Probably about a year ago by now. A year and a half, maybe even. He said, I will not cut my hair until I submit somebody. His fucking hair is long, man. <laughs> his fucking hair is good. His hair's gotten long. And they show him with a buzz cut in the picture here that I'm looking at. It's a, no, man, no. Not even close, man. I'm almost hoping he can get a, you know, a submission win or something, you know, at least he can cut that mop. At the same time, man, I'm, I'm, like I said, man, I'm way in the area of uh, uh, Del Rosario. Uh, I just think Del Rosario is going to be, you know, be a little a little uh, overbearing for him, you know what I mean? Pepperie's able to go off and get these kicks rolling and not get rocked. Because I think chin for chin, I think uh, Del Rosario's got a little bit more. He can take a little more punishment, just my opinion. We'll see, man. We'll definitely see. I, it's going to be a sick-ass fight, though. It should be a badass stand-up war because there's always the factor, you know, somebody could take it down to the ground and try to uh, impo- impose a will, you know, impose some some will and try to break a will, whatever, you know what I mean? I mean, you got two two guys that are, that are pretty damn badass when it comes to stand-up, so they might go to their bread and butter and uh, just go ahead and, and just, for lack of a better word, man, just take the fucking gloves off and go to town. Just go to town and throw down. So, uh, and I'm hoping it happens. But I'm uh, moving along. Uh, we got the, uh, this is the be all end all right here, man. This is the big dog. Who's going to be top 16 ultimate fighter? <sighs> no, but anyway, I, I made too much of a production for that one. But um, Mike Ritchie taking on Colton Smith. Colton Smith has got a sick ass Fitch kind of style. Take you down, beat your ass, grind you out. You know, very good grinder style, man. Very good grind out, beat you up, elbow you, punch you out. Go for a sub if you can, but if you can't, just ride it home, man. The lasso going and just ride the shit home. But uh, Mike Ritchie, I think stand-up wise, probably get the better of the exchange. But I mean, Colton, that's his style, man. He's just going to get a hold of you and take you down and go for it. I think if Colton gets it to the ground, easy win. Probably a fairly easy win. Um, I hope uh, Ritchie can prove us wrong. It's really hard, man. It's really hard. I don't, I don't want to root for the uh, you either like you either you like one guy or you like the other man. You know, and I'm not about all country men and all that crap, man. I don't care what country they're from. It's fucking ridiculous. USA versus Canada. I mean, I mean, come on, give me a break. I, I'm not all about that, man. I mean, if, if, you know, if it's GSP taking on somebody from the U.S., I, who gives a shit, man? I don't care. I, I like GSP. I like Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva's taking on a guy from America. I, I don't care. I'm watching Anderson Silva because he's a damn good fighter, and and you know I'm gonna weigh weigh in the area of a Colton Smith because I don't think uh, Richie can can uh, can hold off the takedown. I just don't think he can, man. I mean, and it's no dissing on him, man. I mean, I think he's a good skilled fighter. He looks pretty good. We saw his fight with his uh, Neil Magny. He knocked that dude the fuck out, and and it was pretty sick. I, I I'm not feeling it though. You know, I'm not feeling it in the way of a Colton Smith. I think Colton Smith's pretty damn good, man. I I, I think he's really good in terms of uh, he's got a good chin and he's got supreme takedown, man. He's got supreme... He can take you down. That's for damn sure, man. He can take you down and fit your ass. People don't like it, but I don't have a problem with it, man. If you're kicking somebody's ass, you're kicking somebody's ass. But anyway, moving along, man. I I give a little bit of edge to Colton Smith. I'm hoping that Richie can at least make it a damn good battle, if anything. If not, you know, fucking go off, man. Win the... Take the shit. Win it. I'm not taking nothing away from Colton Smith either, man. I like him, too. I think they're both cool guys. I think they both... They're both deserving of where they should be at. They're both going for it, for sure. Let's get on to the main event, man. Get it on. Roy Nelson taking on Shane Carwin. <sighs> Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Shane Carwin? No. No Shane Carwin. He got injured again. A couple weeks back, there was a... Uh, Leecher Report, I think it was, said, oh, Overeem, shocker. Well, it wasn't really a shocker. This is a good spot for them to say, hey, Carwin, shocker. And they can go ahead and say, oh, yeah, this weekend is going to be Carwin taking on Roy Nelson. And they can do the noise, <laughs> like the record skipping or whatever. So, oh, Shane Carwin can't fight because he injured his fucking knee. Same thing he's done the last year and a half. Don't get me wrong, people, man. I'm a huge Shane Carwin fan. That's why I'm sick and tired of I'm tired of seeing the guy get injured, man. Stop getting injured for for once already. Shane Carwin injured. 
out, man. Are we going to see him back? I doubt it, man. I doubt it. I think I think Shane Carwin is done. Done. No more Shane Carwin, man. I, 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 think it's, I think it's over with, man. You got this many injuries. You're fighting once every year and a half. It's over, man. It's over. I'm not dissing the guy. I, I, like I said, I'm a fan of the guy. I want to see him fight. It's not going to happen. Not, not, not at this rate. At this rate, it's not going to happen, man. Fuck it. <laughs> Done. You're out. Matt Mitrione gets the call right after Czech Congo. Czech Congo says, I, that's not enough time, man. I can't jump in there short notice and take on a, a big old fucking belly Roy Nelson. I, I can't do that. Dana says, well, shit, man. Czech Congo denied the fight. Czech comes back on Twitter and says, I didn't deny the fight at all. What I said was, I can't take the fight on short notice like you want me to. You know, I think a lot of fighters are really getting together. I was going to say this a couple videos back, but I think a lot of fighters are really getting together, whether they're trying to or not. I think a lot of fighters are really tired of being fucking pushed around and say, you know, this is a great opportunity for you. No, no, just because somebody injured, somebody's injured doesn't mean it's a great opportunity for me. Fuck my career up and, and take every fight that you want me to take on short notice. When Dana White's hands are tied, it doesn't mean a fighter needs to fucking dive onto his balls. So, if he's got to scrap a fight or two from a card or whatever, he's got to do what he's got to do. You know, you're the one that made your fucking organization gigantic and huge and you did it, you know, Sometimes there's repercussions for that shit. You know, you want to fuck all fighters and, and, and make them fucking fight on your terms, your conditions, your cutting statuses. Maybe they're not going to take fights then. They don't want to They don't want to get fucking cut, dickhead. Shit happens. Hey, man, if I was told that, hey, you know, you could take this fight, it, it's awesome, you know, you could be a, a, a team player and everything would be great for you and everything else, you know, but if you lose your ass, you might be cut in a fight or two. Maybe. Who the fuck wants to take that deal? I'm not down. You know, that's that's the track record we've seen. So, anyhow, man. Roy Nelson gets in there, takes a few shots from Matt Mitrione. Mitrione, like I said earlier, gets the call, agrees to the match. Obviously, here we are. We're going into it. Matt Mitrione comes in, gets to it, gets fucking mangled. Mitrione gets mangled because if anybody thinks that Mitrione's going to get beat by Czech Congo and then go on with a Roy Nelson and do any better, that's a little MMA math for you. That's some tried and true MMA math. If you get your ass knocked out by Czech Congo and you're a, you're considered a good striker, you ain't going nowhere against Roy Nelson because Roy Nelson will swallow every punch you bring in your face. I'd be shocked if this fight doesn't end by knockout for Roy Nelson to win it. I would be shocked. That's what I'm going to say for the main event for this fight. Matt Mitrione wins this. It's by some grace of God that none of us know about, apparently. Prayer in hell, hell for uh, Matt Mitrione. And I'm not, I'm not really saying that, but it's like, you know, come on, dude. You're talking about a guy that's got, if not more, the experience that you got. And let's talk about MMA, man. This guy's been in wrestling for years. I mean, Roy Nelson knows what he's doing, man. There's no there's no guessing game with for Roy Nelson in, in this in MMA. He hung in with one of the best strikers in the business to a decision. I'm talking about Junior Dos Santos, man. Junior Dos Santos beat the living shit out of this guy. Same with uh, Perdue. Perdue came back you know, after training with Cadero. Sick-ass fucking striking technique. Beat the living shit out of Roy Nelson for three rounds. Couldn't put him out. The guy's got a chin of granite. If Matt Mitrione is able to able to finally put the nail, you know, and put the nail into the coffin or whatever, and and, and uh, finally bring a bring a stop to uh, Roy Nelson, you know, because I mean chins don't last forever, man. There's always a turning point. If Matt Mitrione's the one to do it, fucking hats off to you, man. Salute, totally. But you know what, man? I don't see it, man. I, I see I see Roy Nelson probably somewhere in the second or uh, throughout the entire fight, Roy Nelson. Mustering any power he wants. I don't care if he's dead fucking tired. He will muster enough power to knock anybody out in the division. Probably anybody besides champion. You know, or, or at least top three. Matt Mitrione's going down. I'm going to go ahead and 100% say it right here, right now. Matt Mitrione is getting his fucking ass handed to him. Whipped. Man. But anyway, man. Legal Oval Radio on Facebook. Check the group out. You'll like it, man. You'll dig it. LegalOvalRadio.com one of the two, whichever you choose. So I'll see you guys soon, man. I'll see you for the Pulse fight. And sub if you haven't. Because if you haven't subbed, you're missing out. So we'll see you soon, man. Take care.